Hi everybody, I'm Cassandra from Craft to Believe After and welcome to another video which is going to be filled with complete crochet randomness. Um, I'm still very much in that beginning of year vibe of trying just all sorts of different things. So I think 2024 is going to remain for me a year where I'm not going to be stressed to make anything specific. I'm just going to enjoy trying different things, um, only making patterns that uh, I feel passionate about. I've actually, in the last couple of weeks, I've started two projects, which after making the head of the specific omigurumi, I just, I lost all love <laughs> and all, uh, you know, <sighs> commitment to making that specific toy. And then I just actually chuck it in the bin. I don't frog anything. I just remove stuffing if there's been stuffing put in it already. And I throw it in the bin. I don't even feel bad about it. I just do not have enough time in my life to sit with a project that does not bring me joy. So I want to show you, like I say, a few random, very random projects. But every one I've actually enjoyed. There was one that was a little more challenging than the rest. And I think I'll start with him. You would have seen him in my uh, thumbnail. It is actually a character that my son asked me to make. And this is called uh, Bimo. So this is a character from uh, a TV series called Adventure Time. So maybe some of you who have got kids or some of you maybe yourself watch the show. I've never in my life watched a single episode of this uh, show which is why I thought the character's name was BMO I kept on calling him BMO and I was put in my place and said please uh, it's BMO so <laughs> now this guy and it's I think the only reason I finished him is because I made it for my son um, you know, I made Jessica a few weeks ago that cat beanie that she asked for. And, you know, my kids really ask me to make them something specific, you know, that they want to keep in their room. So when they do, I jump on the opportunity because, as you know, or uh, as you may have heard me say, you know, my children, uh, my son is now uh, 17. He turned 17 uh, just this past week, actually. My daughter is 12. You know, so they're all at an age where I sometimes think my... <laughs> Uh, lovely crafts do not impress them anymore and then they turn around and they ask me so, for something uh, crochet related and I just am very thankful that my kids are still asking me to make them something so I jumped on it I got out um, a picture started searching for patterns and I found this free pattern um, I will link it I think it is Aradia Toys um, she's the one that does, I think, the mini kingdom patterns. You know, the very small, she's, I, I've got a book of hers. I think it's the same, um, the same designer. But I will link it. It was a free pattern on her blog. Now, actually, this guy comes with a little skateboard as well. And, well, I, I got a little distracted, to be honest. This guy took me three weeks to make, which is way, way longer than I usually spend on an omigurumi even larger omigurumis do not take me three weeks but i think it's because i wasn't it's not a character that i sort of had a connection with it's not like making an animal or a doll even or a certain type of project like a granny square bag it's it's not anything i had a connection with which is why i think it took me a bit longer to make now everything on this pattern is actually supposed to be crocheted but you know, after these teeny tiny little arms and these teeny tiny little legs, um, I just, I started crocheting these little bu button pieces. They are crocheted versions in the pattern. I started on them and they look terrible because they are so small. So I decided to get out my polymer clay. I thought I'm going to make polymer clay um, little, I don't know, buttons, whatever, I don't know what you call these things that's on a gaming console. So I made them from polymer clay and I actually wanted to make his little skateboard out of polymer clay as well but I got distracted when I was busy with the polymer clay and instead of making 
BMO, uh, his little skateboard, I ended up making <laughs> reading glasses or glasses for my bear that I finished last week. So I wanted to experiment a bit. I've got craft wire. So I made, um, I made the shape of the glasses using the craft wire and then I just covered it in polymer clay and I think it is such a cute touch. I really really enjoyed making it but anyway so by the time I put everything in the oven I took it out I realized I never even got to I it didn't even BMO's skateboard didn't even cross my mind but I do like how he turned out so he does have his BMO which is a bit big but it is there a little embroidery at the back but now this can uh, head over or well not head over we are in my son's room this is why I do all of my videos um, so actually BMO will be staying here I won't be packing him away as I normally do when I'm done with my videos so I think I'll just put BMO right there on my son's desk all right that was project number one which is something very different from what I normally do and I really like how it turned out the second project I did. Now you guys, I've mentioned time upon time <sighs> that the worst thing that I can possibly do um, as a crocheter with like a short attention span is watch other crocheters videos and especially <laughs> if it is some of my yarny friends in this community and I'm referring now to Julie over at Kay's Mom Crochets. She um, made this elephant, which was part, the, the pattern is part of this month's Crochet Society um, book. So in this Crochet Society book, the most recent Crochet Society box, one of the patterns was this elephant. Now I am going to tell you something very interesting about myself and my crochet journey and that is although I love elephants as an animal I absolutely hate I hate crocheting elephants uh, I think this elephant that I've completed now is maybe the fourth elephant I have done in my 10 year <sighs> crochet journey it's because I, I, <laughs> I hate I hate making elephants it is the trunk. You guys, I cannot get past the trunk of any elephant pattern. I absolutely detest it. No pattern that I've made. I've made two versions of an Amalu Designs pattern. Now, if I can find photos stored somewhere of the elephants I've made before, I will try and pop pictures onto the screen. So I made a boy and a girl version of an Amalu Designs pattern um, years ago. And then I did one pattern. I don't even know who the designer was of that. I made another version and I just didn't like it at all. That was close on seven years ago, if not longer ago. That is the amount of time. So about a seven year, I'm being generous, a seven year gap since I last made an elephant. Now in a previous Crochet Society book, like I think two years ago, well maybe just under two years ago they had an elephant on the front of one of the crochet society books um, it was when we had like a re uh, repurposed or a re you know those recycled type of yarns and one of the patterns you made with this pink recycled yarn was an elephant I loved the look of the omigurumi but I turned the elephant into a bunny I really really dislike making elephants and I think even this one will be the last elephant that I'll be making in a extremely long time because even though I think the project turned out very cute um, I don't like making elephants but let me show you what she turned out to look like so this is <laughs> the elephant in that crochet society book now if you head over to Julie's last video she actually has a link to pocket mags where you can get the electronic version of a, a much older crochet now magazine so this specific pattern appeared in a crochet magazine a while ago i think it's months and months if not years ago um, so 
you can go to Julie's channel if you want the link to where you can find um, the pattern online. But for my purposes, I used the Crochet Society book. I also used the yarn that came with it. But before I show you the yarn, let me just show you a little close up. Again, it looks like my and Julie's elephants could be like distant cousins because they do have the same look with their embroidery eyes. Um, a, a lot of things in this pattern was weird for me. Um, like my the, the trunk, how she how she adds the trunk onto the head for me was extremely difficult to follow. And I'm I'm not a beginner crocheter at all. Um, but I found these instructions extremely difficult to follow for adding the nose on. First you had to it the decreases was done really nicely. I do like it because it gives the, the trunk some shaping. But then you had to sew a certain amount on the bottom and then you went around and you crocheted at the top and it was just... Uh, I, I don't know. It was for me so difficult to understand. And then another thing they did weird and I had a very good laugh when Julie explained this cap because <laughs> this cap is crocheted as part of the head like it is it's not a separate hat that you put on so this blue part on top is actually the top part of the head so you change colors right here where my brim is so you've got this grayish blue and then you change color to the hat color and then you crochet a separate brim which you sew on afterwards and then the ears you you sew on just below um, just there, just below the, the brim of the hat. And then the, the, the pattern also has this weird, enormous bobble on it that I... Oh, it was awful. I didn't like it at all. So it's got that massive bobble on top. I mean, who on earth wears a hat with an enormous pom-pom like that? I don't know. So I left it out completely and I actually like how she, what she turned out with just a little regular type of beanie. Now the arms you do, I think, crochet in. I didn't. I actually prefer working on arms. Afterwards, I very rarely, when a pattern calls for crocheting the arms in, I will crochet it in. I don't like doing it. Um, so in almost all instances, I will sew on the arms afterwards, which is what I did with this one. Luckily, because I saw Julie's video before actually I started um, this elephant. So I purely did this elephant because Julie's version that she showed about two videos back looks so cute. I thought, no, I'm going to give it a go, even though I don't like elephants. I don't like making elephants. I like elephants. I don't like making them. But anyway, luckily Julie had mentioned that it, the pattern wants you to um, surface crochet around the waist and then you add the skirt on top of that and then Julie mentioned that she just left the front loops open and I did exactly the same so instead of surface crocheting I also left front loops open to attach my little skirt. The neck is done very weird. Now I don't mind attaching heads to bodies. In fact I prefer it. So either um, I like when the body is open so I don't mind if the neck is open and then you sew a closed head on top of it. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind sewing an open head to an open body. That I don't mind at all either. In fact, I prefer that version of putting on heads to bodies. This pattern wants you to sew a closed off head to a closed off body. And that didn't make sense to me at all. I didn't think that would look nice, to be honest. So I left... Um, some stitches open. Now my little pin is going to fall off if I try to explain it. But I left, um, I ended off my body with 18 stitches at the top being open and then I crocheted or I sewed my closed head to mm, my open neck, if you can understand <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so there were a few weird things in this pattern. Um, I also changed up the colors. So all of this yarn I did receive in the Crochet Society box, 
but I changed the colors up because I didn't want that orange at all to be part of my pattern. This little scarf I did also with a cotton that we got, but I used two strands together, the blue and the pink, and I really like how it turned out. And of course, if you've been here for a while, you know that I'm in love with these enamel pins. I add them as embellishments on everything. I love it. And then the eyes, you know, from my, <laughs> my own eye embroidery tutorial. So there is my little elephant. She does look adorable. Now, sorry, I'm wearing now a black, like, sweater. Now you can't see what she looks like. So it's a, it's a dark blue that I used for the leggings. And then this darker pink skirt, a pink and white striped shirt, the two mixed scarf, and then the blue um, beanie, which was very odd. But in the end, I, I think once I added the, the, the brim and the ears, I didn't mind, you know, the top of the head <laughs> being the blue color. So there we go. So I hope you enjoy this, guys, because you will probably not in the very near future see me making another elephant. But let me just quickly show you the yarn. Now you can do this with anything. Um, I just, I almost never make the patterns from the Crochet Society books. I love getting the yarn. I love getting the notions. I do enjoy getting the books, um, but I never make the patterns from it. So this was the first one that I actually did the pattern almost completely. Um, and the yarn we got in it. So this was the color that I just did not want to use um, at all was this orange. It's a beautiful color. Um, I just didn't, I didn't want it as part of this, you know, very nice pink and white and blue and then points orange. No, I didn't get it. Why did they put this color? I don't like it. I mean, as part of that, the color itself I love. Uh, it's like a mango. I think it's called mango. Yeah, it's called mango. It's exactly right. So this, and these skeins, the 100% sport weight cotton, 30 grams. So they're not big, like big little, they're not big balls, they're little balls if you want. Um, 30 grams and about 90 meters. Now, I used out of the dark blue, most of it. So this was the dark blue that we got. It's called uh, passion fruit. Then, I mean, I did, I used very little bits of the pink and white because it was only for the skirt, uh, this pink one, and then the, the light blue and the white, which was the striped shirt. I mean, I've got the majority of it left. So this was really nice to work with. It was on the thinner side of a sport weight. So I use on a regular basis, rainbow cotton 86, which is hobbies, 100% uh, cotton. I absolutely love it. But these, these skeins were more, they, they felt a little on the thin side. So they were definitely a thinner sport weight. They were closer almost to the rainbow cotton 84 for me, which is a fingering weight yarn that I also use quite often. Oh, maybe I must tell you for BMO, for instance, I used rainbow cotton 84, which is a fingering weight yarn, and I used a 2.5 millimeter hook on this guy and then on my elephant I also used a 2.5 millimeter hook with a sport weight um, yarn from Crochet Society. So I do like how this little elephant turned out. Very cute but you will probably not see another elephant from me anytime in the near future. Now let me show you what else I've been busy with. Now you know that I've been enjoying this book a lot I showed you my coasters with the, um, the cross-stitch birds on it last week. And I mentioned that I'm going to be making that little triangle bunting uh, that I want to put in my office space here at home. Just a short little string. Um, so I made, the, um, I made just four triangles. One of them I already tested out. I'll show you this one now. So I made four little triangles out of this fantastic yarn. Now this I bought about two years ago on sale from Hobby. It's Rainbow Bamboo. It is a fantastic yarn to work, um, to use for Omigurumi, but it is terribly expensive. 
So I have got a few balls of this that I bought on sale, as I mentioned, two years ago. And they're such, you know, they've got a lot of yarn in them. So they, they, they last quite a while. They're 100 grams or 3.5 ounces, 250 meters or 274 yards of a sport weight. It's a yarn weight number two. So it does go quite far. Now I love, I love this yarn a lot. So I made my little squeeze because I wanted this nice green color so I've made my little squares in this and on my first square I decided to try something different I doubled up the yarn so in my coasters that I made last week I used a single strand of um, sport weight um, to do the cross stitch or it was either my sport weight or my fingering weight but I only used one strand for this time I tried doubling up so I used um, my sport weight yarn, my Rainbow Cotton 8.6, but I used two strands to do the cross stitch. And I really like the puffy effect that it gives. So it's a, it's a bit of a thicker uh, feel in the end. Now it does also weirdly stretch my, um, my little squares, but I mean, I can block them and to try and just get them <laughs> all straight again. Um, but I really like the look of doubling up the yarn. So this is just one. I just did one this morning to try and see if I like the look of doubling my yarn when I do the cross stitch. And I do. It's got a nice puffy look. So I think for, because there's only four motifs that you can do, which is a, it's a mushroom, a fox, an acorn, and a badger. And it looks like this. So this is what I want to do, but just one of each. Like I don't want to want a massive string like this one. I just want a little short, you know, just a full triangle, little bunting in front of my desk. So I think I really like the look of the double one, the dou using double strand, and I will do my remaining three triangles the same way. So that was that. The last thing, you guys, we kicked off hooking up with books that I'm doing with my very, very good friend Caroline. We kicked it off on the 15th of January. This, um, for, for this first book of the year, which spans two months, we are starting with And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. And now once you watch the film or the I mean, there's a movie, there's a mini series, you can read the book, you can listen to the audiobook. Um, but if you want to take part and then you submit a photo of something that inspired you from the book, some other theme, a color, a whatever, we make a project inspired by the book. And I have already started my project. Um, and I'm just going to show you this. So, this is my first stack of hexagons. So I'm making quite a few hexes. So this pattern that I'm doing, I'm super excited for it. Um, it's something as well that I've never ever in all of my years of crocheting, I've never done this type of project. Um, though it includes like elements of things that I do regularly. So I hope you guys are excited to see what this project is. Now the reveal for our Hooking Up With Books projects will be the 15th of March. So there's quite a few weeks um, left that you can still do your projects. I mean, we just kicked it off this past week. Um, oh, I love that story. It's one of my favorite, favorite Agatha Christie um, novels. It's one of, like, uh, it's a, a very, very good TV series adaptation. If you go to my previous video, I did put links to the YouTube um, mini series. It's one. It's a very, very good um, adaptation of the book. And this project will actually cover two elements within the story. So it's exciting, you guys. I cannot wait to show you. It is such a fantastic pattern that I found super cute. Of course, it's it has to be cute. Um, but I think you guys will be surprised. So this is the first part of my project. Still a few hexes to go. Not many. 
So don't now go expecting an Afghan or something crazy like that from me. Um, but it is something that I've never made before. Super excited. All right, friends, that is it for this week. As I said, interesting, diverse range of things that I've been working on, you know, from BMO for my son, which is a, a cartoon character, and the elephant that I will never remake, uh, although I love how she turned out. I mean, making accessories for, <laughs> for my army gurumi, bunting hexes, it's been a ride this week. I just, I'm enjoying 2024. If I've not, I've mentioned it before, but if you've not heard me say it, I am enjoying 2024 and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. I've been seeing fantastic projects from you guys on Instagram. It is just, I mean, I just love it. I get so inspired. Like I said, I don't even want to open Instagram. I don't even want to start watching videos on YouTube because my brain just goes all over the place. I want to make everything. Um, I love everything that I'm seeing. So this year I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's only what's it? The, we like towards the end of January, but I mean, we're still in January and I'm loving this year so far. So I'm excited for what the rest of the year is going to bring. Uh, for that matter, um, I'm excited to see what the rest of the week is going to bring because every week has been a lot of fun for me so far. I hope you guys are having fun in your crafting, crochet, knitting, cross stitch, painting, drawing, whatever journey, reading, I don't know, whatever journey you are on at the moment. Please enjoy it. There is no point in wasting our time with things that we do not enjoy. Life is short. Uh, this is just what I've realized again when my son had his 17th birthday this past week. Life is short and life goes quickly. Um, so just enjoy whatever it is you're doing. All right, friends. I will see you very soon in another video. Um, I always enjoy hanging out with you guys. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. I hope you're ready for the week ahead. And as always, friends, until I see you in the next video, stay safe and stay crafty.